Yo, I'm Brendan. And right when we thought that the drama couldn't get really any worse with Yada and the situation that they have with Synapse Bank and the fact that fintech companies are going through a really hard time, it just gets worse. At this point, I have basically no confidence in Yada to communicate this well and keep us abreast of what's happening. I'm not exactly sure the inner workings of Yada and how that's affected by this latest development. But thankfully, Prize Pool has kept me in the loop here and they've sent me an email just as a, an everyday consumer, not as someone who makes YouTube videos, just as a person who uses the service to make me aware of this recent development with Evolve Bank. So I wanted to review that with you, not just because you might be a user of Prize Pool or Yada, but because Evolve Bank is an underlying bank for a lot of other fintech companies as well. And so if you were affected by recent developments with Synapse and the breakdown that happened with them and their kind of middleman role between Evolve and other companies, then this could also affect you. The long and short of what happened is that there was a cybersecurity attack directly to Evolve Bank. And so because Prize Pool itself isn't a bank and because most of these new fintech companies that we've used are not directly a bank themselves, they have to partner partner with somebody who is a bank. And in this case, Evolve was targeted. As of right now, they still don't know exactly what happened and exactly what data got leaked and hacked and taken away, but they know that it's both user and bank account data. I'm assuming what user data means is like name, address, phone number, potentially social security number, like your personal information, and then also the bank account information that you have with Evolve. I don't know if that includes other bank account information, like if you had, let's say your primary bank that you've used for years linked through your fintech company to Evolve. I don't know if they got that original bank account information too, that would really suck. But they do reassure us that at least for prize pool users, your account credentials, including passwords, are safe because they don't share that with anybody. Now, of course, if prize pool gets hacked, then you're screwed or whoever your company is, you still are screwed. But in response to this prize pool, I think is being fairly responsible. They're saying, hey, we're going to tell you about this. We're going to implement additional monitoring and make sure that if anything sketchy is happening, we kind of get a hold on it right away. They recommend that we all look out on our accounts and make sure that there's no fraudulent transactions that happen. And other than that, we're basically along for the ride. I mean, there's nothing active that we can do to stop this from happening to ourselves outside of not using any of these services whatsoever. Apparently Evolve does have resources for free credit monitoring on their website, which is nice. But this kind of thing just begs the question, how many times can our data be leaked and sold and resold and transferred around in the underworld of scammy criminals before it ends up coming back to us? And if I'm a criminal, I'm not jumping on this right away whenever everyone is thinking about it and looking at their accounts. I'm probably going to wait three or six months before I try and fraudulently charge anything so that your guard's back down. I would think if these criminals are smart enough to hack this, they're smart enough to take advantage of human psychology at the same time. In response to something like this, I feel similar to how I felt in that previous video that I made all about Synapse and their failure as a middleman between all these new fintech companies and their banking partners, which is like a real catch-22 because I want to use really high tech, cutting edge, good financial products. I wanna take advantage of that because it's either gonna make my life easier or it's gonna make my money grow faster or both. If you just wanna be a Luddite and store your money in a wood box like I've seen on short form video lately, you can do that. You can shove cash into a box and feel good about yourself because yeah, you've got the cash there. You've got something that's physical that you can account for. No one's gonna hack that unless your house burns down or you get robbed, in which case you're super screwed. But the problem with that is it's so inefficient. Yeah, maybe it feels safer to bury gold bars in the backyard, but that money's never gonna be increasing in value like it would if it was invested or if you were taking advantage of these other financial vehicles. And I've never claimed to be a money guru. I'm more of a guide. I'm more of somebody who's a nerd about this kind of stuff and I'm paying attention to it so I can relay the information back to you in like a digestible, quicker format. But I'm honestly at a loss for what to do to prevent the kind of problems that Synapse has created for our lives as well as cybersecurity problems. I don't know what the move is here. Do we reduce our accounts down to just a couple of bigger trusted companies and hope that they don't get hacked? Do we pay for or take advantage of free credit monitoring services to try and keep track of things and be at least aware of what's happening in our account. So if something suspicious happens, we can jump on it right away. Do we do all of the above? I don't know. I frankly just don't know what the best way is to prevent these kind of problems in our life. One of the hardest things about this is that there's not a learnable pattern here. It's not like we can say without a shadow of a doubt, well, all of the new finance companies get hacked. So all you should do is use an old reliable one like Chase or B of A or Wells Fargo or whatever, because they won't get hacked. No, everyone gets hacked. Now they can probably spend more money on cybersecurity awareness and stuff than other companies can, but they're also a much bigger target. They've got billions and billions of dollars to hack into and probably millions of people's information to hack into. So they're like the big whale. If I a hacker wants to go for the big whale, they're going to go for those companies. So I don't think necessarily that they are inherently safer than the smaller companies and smaller banks. I think personally, what I plan on doing is not taking advantage of any new companies that are coming out, or at least anything that requires me to enter like bank information and personal information, like name, address, social security number, that kind of thing, because that's the kind of information that I want to remain secure. It's precious to me. I don't want it out there in the ether. Now I could see potentially using some like data services or things that are just a service that you pay for. And they're kind of the end user already. You know, 
know, if you want stock market trading info or something like that, by all means, pay for that or a newsletter or something along those lines. I feel like that's a relatively safe thing because if they get hacked, what are they going to get from you? Maybe your credit card number, in which case you talk to the credit card company, you reject the charges, everything's fine. But typically I've been the guy who jumps on the new service to try it out, put in some money, trade with it for a little while, give you the report back on how I feel about it and just be fine opening 15 or 20 different investing accounts. But with so many problems happening, especially lately, I'm just a little gun shy. So I'm not going to be jumping on a bunch of new services and new accounts. I'm going to remain using the 10 or 15 accounts that I already have, which I think is plenty. And the intent behind that is hopefully just to lower my exposure, lower the number of fish that I put out in the pond that might get caught by the hackers. If you have any particular method or service that you use to help keep track of your accounts, your credit to combat against a cybersecurity attack, then let me know in the comments. Otherwise, the secret comment word for today is armpit because it is so hot right now. It's so hot across the whole world, I feel like right now. Like maybe in the Southern Hemisphere, you guys are fine in Australia or maybe it's snowing or something. But in England, it's like 85 degrees. Everyone's sweating sweating over there. Where I am, it's like 112 degrees. It's ridiculous. And you feel it in your armpits. Sorry, kind of gross, kind of funny. That's it for today. Just a short one. Want to keep you guys updated. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.